Let's take a look here at physics pace 1134. It's the second physics pace. Good job for getting here. And you got up to page N and O. Good for you. Let's talk about some of these projectile problems. Um, the answer for number 59, the solution guide, is in the back of the score key. And so with your parent or supervisor's permission, you can look through that and see the steps involved. But let's walk through problem 60 with you. I wanted to find a green marker. So a projectile can be a bullet. Um, it can be a cannonball. And that's often what uh, they're picturing when they're doing these kind of problems. And they're talking about a gun shooting. So a muzzle is a gun shooting at a certain velocity. But um, projectile motion relates also to taking a football and throwing a football in the air. It relates to baseball, hitting a baseball or throwing a baseball. And uh, so there are some physics behind all of these sports. Now we do have to ignore the uh, wind resistance when we're solving these problems. In real life, obviously the wind has a, uh, has a factor to play in the spin on the football and all those other things. But in the, in the bear's form, the projectile could be a football or a baseball or a ball that you kick, a soccer ball. And uh, so you get the great thing about soccer, okay? If you're a, or in other countries, they call that football. And so if you're trying to get the ball to go the furthest down the field possible, you don't want to kick it high because from what we learned in this, these previous pages, the higher you kick it, it's going to go up and then come right back down. Okay. And if you don't kick it very far, I mean very high, it's also not going to go very far. And so I think the book points out that a 45 degree angle will actually get it the furthest down the field. So there's a little practical application of physics to real life, okay? Here's, an, here's another one. Do not shoot a bullet straight up in the air. The velocity that you shoot the bullet, it'll go straight up and then it'll gradually slow down until it reaches its maximum height. It'll stop for a brief second and then it'll start to fall and gravity will pull it faster, faster, faster until by the time it comes right back to where you shot the gun, it's traveling at the same speed that it left the gun. And as I'm recording this, we just pulled out of Afghanistan as a country, and I heard the report that a lot of the Taliban were celebrating by shooting their machine guns straight up in the air. And then these bullets came raining down on top of them at the same speed that they were shot up in the air and killed dozens of them and injured hundreds. So um, that's also a uh, important application to know about projectiles. All right, let's talk about this problem. <clears throat> a lot of formulas in here and you can get lost in the weeds thinking about it. I do want you to, we, honestly, in working with students in physics, one of the things we have to nail down is the difference between horizontal and vertical, okay? Horizontal means going this way, so kind of like the horizon. You see the sun coming up over the horizon, or in a movie at the end, you know, the happy couple goes off in a carriage and they go off to the sunset on the horizon. Vertical is going up and down, okay? So vertical, horizontal. So keep that straight, that'll help you. <clears throat> Got to have a calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Some calculators have rad at the top or some other one. I forget what it is. Make sure it says deg for degrees. And we are going to have to use sine and cosine. All right. First thing we have to solve for is what is the velocity v in the vertical direction. And then we're going to find the velocity in the horizontal direction. So get your calculator out while I get mine. I'm going to take the velocity, the muzzle velocity, that's the speed at which the bullet is leaving the gun. So I'm going to take 200 times, actually on my calculator, I need to first do 30 and hit sign, okay? And then take that times 200, all right? Do it with me. Okay, don't copy my answer, you do it. Make sure you do sine of 30, multiply that times 200. 
birthday, you should have gotten 100. And that's because the sine of 30 is 0 0.5. All right, now let's do 30 cosine. That's a much longer number, 0.8660254, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're going to take that times the 200. I almost did 20. 173. Ah, I'll just throw in the point two for now. Okay. And that's a good question. Sometimes students wonder, when do I round off for significant figures? At the very end. Okay, try to keep as many figures as you can reasonably while you solve, and then round to the significant figures for your final answer. Now, the time is important to calculate, and here's the formula. We're going to take the vertical velocity, and we're going to divide by gravity, which is always 9.81 when we're doing meters. If we were doing feet, it would be um, a different number. I think it's 32. But let's take 100, divide by 9.81, and then multiply that answer times 2. So I get 20.39. That's the time. Okay, so that would obviously be in seconds. All right, now to find the range. Range is how far in the horizontal does this projectile go. We'll take the VH, which is this number here. All right, VH times the time, that number right there. And then for the maximum height, we have a formula right here. We take the vertical velocity 100 times and again we're going to take the vertical velocity divided by 9.81 okay take that answer times 100 in this case times one half or divide by two you could just divide by two and that will be how high the maximum height before it started to crest and come down so an interesting thing and the book talks about this the pace talks about this when a projectile leaves and is going this way, there is nothing changing the horizontal velocity, okay? So that's why the range is just the horizontal velocity times the time. Boom, that's easy. As long as it's in the air, it's moving forward, it's not slowing down, nothing is stopping it. Except that there is also the vertical component. And in the vertical component, we do have gravity. So it might go up, but it's slowing down. And then it reaches its maximum height. And then as it starts to come down, it accelerates a little bit until it hits the ground. The point where it hits the ground is also where we have the maximum range. So the range, that's where it hits the ground. Okay? I'm not going to finish this for you. You have a calculator. I want you to go ahead and finish it. But these formulas... Um, it's like a template, really. Just write, all, write them all down for every problem that you're going to do here on page N and O. Write these formulas, plug in the numbers, use your calculator, and solve for all of these. Okay? And then remember what each of them means. Um, just a note to supervisors and teachers, I, I think I would encourage students to have these on a, on a 4x6 card, 3x5 card, and use it while they're doing their work, um, even on the checkup, the self-test, the pace test, but um, I'm going to defer to your judgment on whether you think that's necessary or maybe it kind of depends a little bit on the student as well. And so I'm going to stop there and I hope that helps.